What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a really special guest. Listen, this man is a singer, songwriter, and a producer. And this is one of these quiet giants that you don't really get to hear about, but he's done a lot in the business, and we're going to hear about it tonight. You know, we have in the building today, we have Mr. Robert French in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? <laughs> Everything is up, you know, life is here, so we're all good. We're talking today, you know, and that is one of the wonderful things, you know. You understand. Thank you for joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast tonight. Respect. No, it's a pleasure. All right. On this podcast, we like to go right from the beginning and then bring it right up to 2022. So my first question for you is this. Where did you grow up in Jamaica, and what type of child were you? Well, I grew up in the in in in, in Kingston, you know, um, Kingston and Saint Andrew region, and um, it was for a child like me, you know, a child like me was just an humble youth and always um, like to have fun, you know, play with my friends, listen to music, and you know, music was one of the things that intrigued me a lot. And um, it draw me closer to uh, a lot of stars that I used to love and still love, because they are icons. And, you know, um, that's me as one of the child, you know, and just love to sit down and, and meditate a lot. And that's me. All right. And what was the neighborhood like growing up when you were growing up in Kingston at this time, you know? Well, it was a neighborhood... Um, it was a kind of like a rough, you know, rough, rough neighborhood. You know, I never could grow up in any uptown or whatsoever. I always grew up in the, the wood, they call it here, you know what I mean? So it was like, you know, there and um, seeing a lot of crime and seeing a lot of good things and all of that. Everything mixed up in one, you know? And it was a tenement yard. I used to live in a, a, a yard where a lot of tenants live in one yard so it's just that um we encounter with a lot of different people and you know we have to just know how to live and live skillfully and get out when it reached a time which i did know you know and um that was it you understand and your parents were your parents working they were hustling what were they into back then all right my parents was always hustling and my, my, my mom, she was the backbone for everything. Cause my father wasn't around as much, but my mom was the one who be the mother and the father. And um, I used to watch her and she used to teach me that, um, listen, when you grow up, just be firm. And when you have a lady around you, you must always, you know, look out and look out for the kids and all of that. And my mom was just really grounded, rooted in a, in a way where she used to do like domestic work, which they call helper. Mm. And um, we used to, I used to go with her. Everywhere she goes, she, I used to be her handbag. So it's that I used to travel with her and see what, kind of situation she was facing and everything but luckily she was always working with some good people mm. and i met my godmother through the same situation where she worked and i met the um the songs mm. and they taught me well they keep me grounded to one you know going to her process and everything you know i watch her she really tired hard you know Mm -hmm. Got you 100%. And brothers and sisters, you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, man, I have too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dad has like 27. Wow. Yeah. My mom, she has like six kids. Mm -hmm. I'm included in the six. And where do you fall? Oldest, youngest, in between, where do you fall? All right, I'm the third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the third one. So I'm just right in the middle. And what was a growing up being in the middle where you have the younger ones, you have younger and you have older. What was it like being a middle child growing up? It was, it was good at all. It was not as bad as I thought it to be, you know, because um, I have to take care of the younger ones and the, the bigger ones have to take care of all of us <laughs> who were behind them. You know what I mean? So um, I used to just watch my brother 
I shall love my brother. I shall be um, a, a, a stepping stone behind my brother because my brother used to be a, a, a more rude um, young man growing up. And I used to watch him doing the miracle work and working at a certain place. And he would take me along because I'm still starred me, you know, from I was Uncle Baby, you know, because I don't know. I, I, I just grew up and just start doing this musical vibes and my brother used to see that in me. He just didn't start me, so he used to take me along with him to everywhere he used to go. And my sister now, she used to be um, one that time. Um, I used to take her because she never knew a lot of places. I used to take my other, my bigger sister. I used to take her along with me and show her places and all of that. So that's what it's all used to be. And... That's it. Right there. All right. And even growing up now, because you have your brothers, you see what your mom's doing and everything. You see the neighbor. What did you think you were going to get into growing up? Do you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a judge, a soldier, a mechanic? What did you want to be? Hmm. I didn't want to be a pilot. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to be a pilot. And um, I used to be around my same godmother, which her husband was a pilot. Mm. And he used to fly for the here Jamaica. And um, I used to watch him. I used to emulate him a lot. I used to just see him and used to be like, yo, I want to be a pilot. And I watch all his, friend, his friends come to the house and, you know, you can see all them friends them, and how them really band together and all of that. And I used to say, yeah, that, I, I want to be a pilot one day. But the thing is, when I used to um, think about the pilot and going to Kingston College, um, I find out that, um, yeah, if I want to be the pilot, but I get more scared because I miss the plane. I go up and I just... <laughs> 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 that side, we are go up and I hear I'm not afraid. I thought I have to do. Mm-hmm. And... After, after a while, I find out the height is like a, a trouble to me in a way. I say, well, you know, I grew up on the height no more. You know, so, so I start, some friend them knows that we have at this um, school band. Mm. And that draw me away from the pilot, thinking to music. Music. So then this was when you went to school now. Was this when you discovered your voice? Say, okay, I could actually sing, DJ, or do something no. with my voice? No, I discovered this from when I was a, a, a little kid because I used to see all the stars come to the yard that I used to live in. I used to live in a yard where all the stars come to, come to that yard. And um, I used to have Desmond Nika, used to have Fred McKee, Used to have the um the Desmond Deck and the AC the AC here yeah, and Monty Morris and all of these big stars used to come to the yard. Dennis Brown, you name a few. And um to name a few of them, I could remember we are some musicians there too. And uh, every day them come to the yard and keep jamming, jamming. So one day I I see. Desmond, James, and Barry, which is the Desmond Deck and the ESS, on the television, and I'm singing. Um, I'm saying, wait, who oh, them get to the TV? Who oh, for the TV, too? <laughs> <laughs> so I start said to myself, say, you know, I'm going to start singing, man. I'm going to start singing, I'm going to go for the TV. So one day, I'm going to sing, and it's like, when I finish sing to myself, me or like the same song when me I sing, I play by the radio. That was too. But it was a yellow vision now. That's what I sing. Put the song, the song like the song when me I sing a while ago. And from there, so now I keep on, I jam to myself on a trifle, Perf- um, be a perfectionist in the, um, the music. But at the time, I never catch a craft as well as I thought I would. But, you know, growing up and everything, and growing up and growing up and growing up and hearing music every day, my first song, when I sing my first song, I sound like Madhu. Okay. And when I sing that song, um, the song named Car Girl, Car, and when I sing the song, I was like, wow, I sound like Madhu. <laughs> but um, at the time, I still want to perf- um, be a perfectionist and go higher and higher and higher and higher. So we decided, all right, so like Madhu, no. Who else may I go so like? Mm-hmm. Start your Barrington Levy. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Start here Tristan Palmer. Start here Byron Brown. Start here Linval Thompson. Start here some great stars singing. That is brown. And I said, no, man, I have to try to catch them voices. Yeah. So I start catching a lot of voices. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, I'm catching a lot of voices. I could sing like Barrington Levy. I can sing like Tristan Palmer. I can sing like Linval Thompson. I can perfect some of the sounds. And, and then I said to myself, well, you know what? Um, I catch the sounds um, and I catch the vocals and catch the, the melodies and everything. So I say, you know what? Um, I try to come to my own or mercy who me is. So while I was growing up, growing up into the music, I find out that one day I um, sing for the school, mm-hmm. which I used to do all the sets. And I used to go around and sing in, 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 in different schools. Mm-hmm. And I see um, it was Peter Tash at the St. Jude's. Mm-hmm. And I sang that evening and he come and said to me, say, come here, you you know, see, I went top. If you keep at it, you know, you could top the business, you know, you'll be a star, you know. Some say, yeah, that encouraged me more now. So some start go out and start performing and Junior Tucker and all of us was in the same school. So we start those shows together and the band start playing. From that, you know, um, we start grooving to my own and then I find that skill. And mm-hmm. knowing that I find that skill, I was trying to perfect the heart more and more. So this is where it's at. That's where it's at. So then you said in school you, you were in the band and all that. Did you actually join any competitions back then or anything? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I did um, the Bohemia and all of them. And second, I finished third. And if I really want to win none of them, mm-hmm. I'll go to Skateland though. And I went to skate. No, I, um, 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 let me recap that. I think mm-hmm. I, I, I win the skate land one. Okay. I never get any. I never get any money. <laughs> For, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I get promise. Yeah. Because um, mm-hmm. all the, the, the talent shows you go, there was always a prize. Mm-hmm. And the prize is that I did always want to um, win all of these prizes. And I think that was a good thing about there was some Bad, bad singer. Mm. And when I go there, I said, find them out. I said, wow, them guys are been tougher than me, man. And I said, yo, we don't want to one day we'll tap it. Mm-hmm. And that it. So I'm and that was one of the things that gave me my experience. Mm-hmm. Right there. So, okay, so you're doing all this wonderful stuff. Now, when was the first time you actually went into a studio now? Uh, my first time I went into a studio, it was um, my first single, Care Girl, Sound Like You, you My Do. Mm-hmm. And um, when I go to studio, that was in the way back. I can't even remember the day. <laughs> it was way back. <laughs> and I go into the studio, but I never perfect the art. I never catch where I'm at right at that time. So mm-hmm. I said to myself, you know what? I go into the studio the first time, this little small studio with these two guys around the machine and you have to sing. You can't stop. Mm-hmm. That's just keep singing. Anyway, I go in and I sang and, and it was good. The song come out as nice as I expected the one, you know, it make a little buzz because it was selling and BP records and all of them were selling my records. And um, from there, I said to myself, you know what? I think I'm going to keep going at it. So there was, that was my first song and my first studio experience. And then I moved from there and then I started going to the, the Joe Gibbs and all of them. And then my expertise start, everything will start coming to place and I start blow from there. At that time there, at that time, were you actually singing on any area songs at that time, or you were just more or less trying to get into studio and record music? All right. At that time, when I finished doing that first song, yeah, I was trying to get on some sound systems Mm -hmm. because, you know, that's where now you're going to get that big buzz Mm -hmm. because the sound system carry 
people from all over Kingston and you have people come to the dances and, you know, you have to go in and hold a mic and all of that. So that was one of my experience too, yes. When I go to the dances, I started want to hold a mic, but I was like there and telling artists, you know what, I'm an artist too, you know, but, you know, I never get that buzz at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I still wait until my turn. So one day I go to, um, uh, it was Gemini Club, which Gemini was playing, mm -hmm. and I see Ringo, an artist named Ringo. Mm -hmm. He was the top top at that time. Yeah, I said, I said to Ringo, Ringo, and so who are you? And I say, is that singer? And I say, yeah. And say, well, you can sing. And say, you sure? He said, yeah, well, we can sing. And say, all right, I'll give the mic, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the time, he was because of boom, I'm pushing mic in man. I mean, if I perform right here and then I start singing and the club and all start and everybody start raving and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I, I I started to be a singer who was singing many different sound systems. Like the Metrometer was one of my first sound too. Mm -hmm. Metrometer, Stone Love. Then you go to um, Kilimanjaro, Stereograph, name all of them sounds. I was the one who used to go around and sing on the sounds and stereo mix from um from Ochi and you have many other sounds many other sounds I used to be singing on okay so you didn't have like a permanent song where okay this is Jaro and his song this is your song you were just guessing my on, song on. was metrometer mm -hmm. my song was metrometer because that's the song that I started out on metrometer with metrometer coming out Mm -hmm. And um, as a as a, as a sound system, so I was singing on Metrometer, and Metrometer was just the sound that I like, and it was a lot of friends on Metrometer, Peter Metro, and you have all of the guys and like Zuzu and all of these guys, and you know it was always welcoming to go to Metrometer, and every time I go to Metrometer, I'm a star, mm -hmm. so everybody would pass the mic to me as I I, I hit the dance, so. It was a good vibe, it mentioned me that. That they're okay, you're singing, you're doing your stuff, you're on song. How come you never changed your name and adopted like a stage name or something? You just kept your original name right through. Because I'm original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I find, because I always, because to tell you the truth, I thought your name was a, was a made up name, especially when you put the two F's on the French. But as I really looked into it and did some research, I said, no, nah, man, this is the man's real name. Yeah, because you see, the difference with me now, I, 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 I want to make me. And for me to make me, I have to stay as original as I can be. I never want to use any flaw other names or whatsoever because the difference is I want this to become my business and I want to stay into this business and um, protect my brand, which is Robert French and my career going forward. It's always wanted to stay original. Mm -hmm. Got you hundred percent. I know somebody you connected with early in your career was um, Joe Gibbs. How do you connect with Joe Gibbs? Through a classmate. Uh, my classmate, his dad was the owner of Joe Gibbs, and that's Rocky Gibbs. And um, we go to school together for a bit, and then um, we branch apart because Rocky Gibbs go to um, GSC and I go, stick, um, go to KC because we was going to KC. Both of us was going to KC, and then Rocky Gibbs leave and go to GSC and I stay at KC. And from there, um, I know Rocky Gibbs, and I keep that link with him. But one day, I um, want to go to a big studio to really do some recording, and I decided that I would go to Joe Gibbs. And while I was going to Joe Gibbs, I go there with a friend, and in Joe Gibbs' studio, stand up in the yard, I see um, the, the, there was an engineer named Errol, Errol Thompson, right? Mm -hmm. And Errol Thompson was the big bad engineer. And I, st I stand up in the yard and everything. And Errol T come to me and said, what are you guys doing in the yard? And I was like, Yo, come for the same, I can buy some song, you know. 
And the computer says, can't find the song. We are doing it. And they beat me. I get a beat that day. Mm. And even when I get that beat up that day, I was saying to myself, no, I stop my song, go back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I cry on my way home because I get beat up that day. I mean, when we get beat up, I say, oh, I'll mean, take it like a man, you know. Because the beat up that when we get, you know, just make me even stronger, you know. I make me have the courage to go back, you know. So when we go back the next day, I plan to get another beat up. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, when we reach in the yard, there goes Rocky, gives walk to the gate. Mm. I say, wow, Rocky. I'm saying, three and three are there. I'm saying, no, I'm Rocky. I'm singing, and I'm saying, boy, oh, hey, sing our French. I never knew you sing before. I'm saying, no, man, I'm singing for two. So I'm just sing something for me. I'm just sing free, man. I'm singing. It was a hit song. <laughs> Barry Salmon wrote that song, too. And I, 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 I sing out that song. And then he said to me, say, come, I'm going to record song here. And we're going to the studio. Everybody was in, in like, everybody was surprised and was like, Go oh, man we inside again. I told him to marry him. He come back. I'm sorry, Rocky, I'm coming down. You know? At the, the, the bar, son, this now. So they say, oh, I, I Rocky, you know, some can't move me. And so they put me in the studio and I said, make me hear him can do. He said, I start seeing the whole studio astonish. And everybody was like, wow, the boy of a boss. He must <laughs> make it. And everybody in the student all start applaud me and you have um Al Campbell, you have Trinity, you have all of them big guys in the student, um Dillinger and um I think um I can't remember who was the next person, but everybody applaud me. And we say, All right, then you're a bus student, man. Or is it I'm a bus student the first song. Is the, the first one too young? No, the first one was on the dance floor. Yes, yes, yes. That's the one say, um, come and we dance, dance, cause it done gone bad already. That song. Mm -hmm. And boss the place. Then when my boss the place, now I come with another song, what more do you want? I'm going to come with meet me by the river. I'm going to come with many other, it's a joke. It's push, push, all of them songs. Girl, no ideas. And everybody know. Mm -hmm. No, so me had a Dan. Me had one of the Dan now. <laughs> Grace so, from that meeting. To become one of the top singers of the studio, it was a great thing for me. Right there. And you said the first song was On the Dance Floor. This was a on song written by Bears Hammond. How did you even connect with Bears Hammond in the early stages to even get a song written by Bears Hammond, boss? Because I used to go to, remember I, tell, I told you that I, I go to skip and under the talent concert mm -hmm. and I never get paid. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back to see me see the, the bass man jingles. Mm -hmm. So say me can't get back oh, even half of the money. <laughs> <laughs> the best to get the money, but mm -hmm. on my way up to Skateland, there was a studio beside um Skateland named Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And Barry Salmon used to be the top one of the top thing up there because you know me to do the ballad and all of that. So mm -hmm. but then I said to myself, you know what? I go for the studio to see what happened, you know. And I go for the studio one day, I hang out, and I hang out with some good friends, Malvin and all of these, uh, rapper Robert and Tipperley and all of these guys. And I remember some of Star Grove. And you now we, we're friends for like 37 or going 40 years. And within that time, though, there someone take me on their wings mm -hmm. and then him start show me some things and start a uh, groom me. As a young artist, and I show me some things and all of that, and I'm writing a song for me. But well, they sing the song for Merit, you know. Mm. But when I was supposed to sing that song for Merit, the time it span for me to sing that song for Merit, it's like it wasn't moving as far as I expected to. Mm. So I'm saying, you know, I'm not doing it on the road, so I met him and I said, Go down there and see what we can do. So we go down there and when we meet Rocky Gibbs you now, we get the opportunity to sing the song. Mm -hmm. So when we sing the song now, and there's some notes, you know, everybody like the song, everybody starts saying, yeah, this song is a big tune, big, big tune. So when we sing the song, there's some on the kind of, you know, mm -hmm. I'm fixed really, but I'm the dad as well, the great thing for me, and it's a good friend of mine. I'm all enough to give my heart.
<laughs> to bear it because in the just for all is I look out for the good for me. And then him said to me, say, all right, don't worry yourself. You sing that song like I got many songs, you know, and the boss that you know. Mm-hmm. There were many songs mm-hmm. about, so you don't have to worry about that, you know. Yo, you mm-hmm. sing one song, make that one. And I sing the song for Joe Gibbs. Mm-hmm. The song to come boss the place. And then um the biggest thing about it when the song about the place too, you know. And I go on and I start singing other songs and thing I go on. They have a group named Cook in America in four seventies. Mm-hmm. We done the song. Okay. And so just like me. And the love letter album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um and the the them them they have a it song on the album between the name Tears, Tears, yes, man. my mm-hmm. emotions coming down. And I saw me meet um Chisco and start knowing most of the guys. I mean four seventies. Mm-hmm. And then bust the album, then all the song it blew up. Barge and everybody start playing the song in Jamaica and say and compare my song with their song and um it was just the big thing, the highlight thing. So Joe Gibbs get that big spark there again from the four seventies doing over that song and Sky's the Limit. And up to today, that song stands out. Mm-hmm. On the dance for a big song, there was another song. I think you might have recorded this one for Rocky, which was uh, "Meet Me by the River." Right, that's another big tune. And the big, um, big song, Heavenless, Heavenless rhythm. rhythm, yes, man. Yeah, that's a big, big tune. Mm-hmm. And that song was like the second. Um, you have Lady and on the rhythm in farm. Mm-hmm. You have Dennis Brown. Your love got a hold on me, and then you have Meet Me by the River. So them three song was a three standout song on on that rhythm, mm-hmm. and it becomes a, a big thing because Joe Gibbs even put out a, um, a, a compilation. And the compilation of all the top songs on it, and that was a great compilation for Joe Gibbs. Music mm-hmm. that I run through the door like water. And I tell you, them are them are selling music, and I see that with my own eyes. And you know, it was a great feeling for them. I on the album with the Deb, Ennis Brown, and you know, it was a it was a good feeling. Remember earlier, you said that you used to see Dennis Brown come into the tenement yard. So then you from seeing him to now being on a record with him, that must be a crazy feeling altogether. What? Dennis Brown. Every time, I mean, you know, I produce a song with him too. We're, we're going to get into that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dennis Brown does. Uh, you know, Dennis was one of my, 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 I'm an artist, one of my artists I'm in love deeply. Yeah, and um, you know, it was sad to know that you know, him is not around, but him song still lives. Mm-hmm. But then it's born at the bars, you have to salute him for sure. There, so at this time here now, you have a couple of big songs on your belt. Were you starting to perform like on stage shows or flying out or anything at this time, or you were still just local? Well, I'm not mark me, I'm born the place. <laughs> the place. <laughs> I go from places to places. I, mean, I go many different places. Grand came all over the places. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the whole of the countries that remember travel. Mm-hmm. It's like um, at them young stage, you know, going out of the Jamaica, it was, it was a great feeling for me because I um, never expect to really have a most the place like oh, I did. In eighty three, because it 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 was a eighty three eighty two eighty three coming up. Robert French run this run the road run the road till the end. A lot of people don't know him. Um, I was out here before Frankie Paul. I was out here before Junior Reed. I was out here before Michael Palmer. I was out here before um was half pint. All of them out there before them. I mean, about the place. And when them come meet me you now, then I say, yeah, see it now. And me and them, because it was a cat, a rat, and a dog, and then Robert French. That's how it is to me. <laughs> For sure. I call Palmer Jr. read Half Pint. Mm-hmm. And That's then we have the big songs. Then. Mm-hmm. And then it was always a, a it was, it, we all called a rival mm-hmm. with me and them guys, but 
I love half time, I love Gina Reed, and I love Michael Palmer. It was just a rival where we use music against music and who oh, of the baddest music, you know? Mm-hmm. And I would share them against me still, but <laughs> I stand up with them mm-hmm. and me tell you the more more about the story going forward. But it was a it was a it was a good vibes. Good vibes. All right. I got that in mind where it's a junior read half pint. And who was the third person? Michael Palmer. Michael Palmer. I got that in mind. Okay. There's another part of your journey I want to ask you about right now. You linked up early with um Black Solidarity label. That's with Tristan Palmer and a couple of them. How did you even connect with them? Because a friend of mine from Kingston College again introduced me to a guy. Um, not even a guy. I'm not gonna style him. I got, Jimmy can take it personal when you call them guys. Mm-hmm. So let me let me uh, rephrase that. A, a, a man named Philip Morgan. Mm-hmm. And um, Philip Morgan was a bridge of mine where through the link with Mark from KC, link me with him, he must he just come become that close come become so close with me. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Sloan and Mr. Tell me things and Mr. Said to Mr. Robert, you know, say really and truly a wicked singer. And Mr. Alves, I try to look out for the best of my interests. And Mr. Tell me, say, boy, come go up and already me and, and Tristan Palmer now he used to be there with us too. And Tristan Palmer, I have to give him credit and Mr. Tell me some things too and I learn some things from him. Mm-hmm. And show me sometime over singing and key and all of that. Um, from there, that's how that link bill and I've done some songs for them, but um, the major hits was more on the jogic side. Mm-hmm. But I've done some some nice songs for Black Solidarity. Mm-hmm. And I know that you even earlier in the career too, you linked up with um Jack Thomas, the um Midnight Rock label. Oh. You guys even put out an album. How did that connection come around? That Thomas through the same link, mm-hmm. Tristan Palmer, Black Solidarity, as it Thomas, Philip Thomas, Philip Morgan, I mean, with Edda and because them hear me, I bust the place now, and then me Black Solidarity. So, you know, Jet Thomas, Jet Thomas is a man now, like this now, now. See, anyway, the bad artists, them, they, you might find them, because I'm one them for the midnight rock claim, mm-hmm. So, Jet Thomas find me when me hat to him. Are you young? Had had star in the midnight, and Jeff Thomas linked me, you know, with um, a, a guy named, uh, oh, name again, Virginia name. Um, do an album together to him. Anthony Johnson. And Anthony Johnson. Mm-hmm. And, and me and Anthony Johnson do, um, did that album face to face. And me had some bad tunes on the rhythm, then, so. Me no want a war on them tune there. And a um, couple other songs. And I saw Jetta must know, you know, get me to go up on the car. And that's some bad little rhythm too, you know, bad little rhythm. And they like him rhythm then. So and this is the way oh, Jetta must steal me away, you know, in a few minutes from Black Solidarity and get them to the voice. And when the voice and songs, you know, him put on that album. But it wasn't saying that Jetta was a, 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 a producer that I was around for a long time. There was a, a, a minute where I go over to Jetta and and write a couple of songs and just go back to my camp. Mm-hmm. So your camp was more or less Black Solidarity. Was That was more or less your camp? Oh, boy. No, oh, the black Solidarity was my, one of my camp. Yeah, one of. Because I was at Joe Gibbs, too. And I was even still linking with Barry Saman. So the major camp was Joe Gibbs. It was Joe Gibbs, yeah, because that's where a lot of the early hits came out from, from Joe Gibbs and even his yeah. son, Rocky. Mm-hmm. Right. Bringing up Barry's Hammond now. Now this is this is the Too Young song. This was voiced on the Harmony House label here. So then now, is this the, after you did the song for Joe Gibbs, he said, okay, come in now. Now it's my turn. You're going to do a song for me now. All right. Um me and Burst thing no, it, it, it kinda of different. I tell you I miss you. Me love Barry Saman so much that if you tell me to go I you know, sing till tomorrow morning, it might really trouble me because you are no 
is a man that put him, him put all in, in, in hard earned time behind me. Him do a lot for me. And it's like, when him say sing, me hardly do all sing because him always have something for show me. He must have make a unique things where me and him can. If me stick around very somehow, he tell me, me to oh, not talk this from TV for the first time I interview. If me and Barry, if me still on Barry Salmon all the time, and Barry Salmon just listen and give me the hundred percent of my want. Because it's just that trim music still, but if you get a hundred percent of me, you really walk in the studio, per se, not in time, hundred percent in the studio. Me no. So right now, Barry Salmon have a whole for hit songs to sing for me. You know? Okay. I have a whole for hit songs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell yourself, I'm put all them songs where people cry. <laughs> I tell the truth. Because my young and even my voice is still around, but there are some nice voice, nice songs. When I say nice voice, you know, nice melody songs, where men sit down and produce some songs, and I'm them. Yeah. See, so I did have to really step out and go do some other things, but I did have to sing for bears. I never stopped singing for bears. Mm -hmm. Big one there. So was it Barris Hammond where you really learned the production business from there? Was that where you got interested in it? Ah, no. It's just like I'm always a businessman. You know? I always think business. I always think business. Because you know what I'm, You must always learn to give back in the business. Mm -hmm. I always learn to give back. When I started singing, and I started singing all of my songs, the man... The hit songs them start coming and all of that. And we see a little flow of income coming in. My thoughts go right back to giving back. Mm -hmm. What who can I help? Who next? Who we can help from poverty? You know, because you know they get a really rough mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't they, who are the talent. Don't get the chance. So I'm going to start look for the talent and when I get to me can help. I'm going to start help a couple of artists and start producing the songs and because producing is I think when we try. And when we try it, I'm going to say it really has work and it can help people. I start love it even more. So I start doing a lot of productions now with other different artists. I start mucho career. I start a lot of artists' career. Yeah, but it's I give thanks because I still hear them talk about it and I still hear them say, Why? I remember French, you know, and I feel good in myself and I feel a joy, but you know what I feel good about? Mm -hmm. Them can give back to them family, them can make them kids eat, them can make them mother eat, and them can make them father eat. That's a joy for me. It's basically you paid it forward so then they could pay it forward and hopefully anybody after them continues to pay it forward. So it just continues to go on and on and on. Right. And I mean, because of your first label, I know you have two labels. You have France and you have the French. Right. Mm -hmm. France was the one that um, Rough and Tough came out on. Right. Mm -hmm. And modern girl, and you have what? major worries, mm -hmm. and you have so many artists Clementine, you have Johnny P, you have name them, all the artists. Um, Lu I think Lucian Account in France, or French, one of them. But there was a lot of artists, even before Luciano, mm -hmm. the Butch Bantan, all of them coming up. Yeah. Right there. So even with the um, rough and tough, because that one there, you kind of gave them more like a sing J, almost like a DJ type of style on it there. Where, was that song actually pointed towards somebody or that was just the vibe that you were feeling okay. to put on that song? No, you come back to me and I'll find it and read. That's Michael Palmer. <laughs> that song was a song that... We made a pressure, I'm missing them three stars, they have pressure me and stay true. And every night they pressure me. Because we had to stay true back to back, you know, because you know, mm -hmm. we had to run stay true. When we say run stay true, Robert French, Michael Farmer, Junior Reed, we had to run the 80s, or run the 80s, every show. Mm -hmm. We had different, different shows and things. Someone said, them three, you tell, all the memos, so. 
Mi-a făcut mica ce bun fele mele, mi-a făcut mica bani ce bun fele mele. Să mă lăsi, nu am... Să mă lăsi, mi-a făcut să mă dar eu de evătă, nu mă mai vai, de atingă, o copă fără de sangă. Am zis, e, mă, de-așa de sangă să fă cule, mă, af, mă. Să fă cule, mă, mă, mă. Am zis, mă, de... Am zis, nu, 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 But the lap I lay, the lap I lay, the 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 Well, I wanted to sing them, and I can say, up to this time, you know, a dance I learned them, you know. Mm-hmm. Because even on that same rhythm has the modern girl, which is to me Courtney Melly's biggest song. How did you even link with Courtney Melly, and you guys came up with that song, Modern Girl? All right, Modern Girl, no, it's a song where me and my virgin, me and my virgin in Jamaica, many chant to Jamaica. And the me I'm all is my place. I mean, no, oh, forget our own. And you love the production thing, but I'm here a producer, I'm here a man. Because mm-hmm. I do my thing from back then. But he never really stream a night like that. So, but they are Jamaican, no one, they are queerous records. And she be stuck with you, too, but I hear my sing to you, and a man bring me attention to you, you know. You must sing, you know. I'm saying, I like the voice, you know. The voice is so unique. I'm carrying a clearus the night. And I'm singing in front of the man. And I'm telling him, to, yo, a bad thing about me. I hear him otherwise, you know. I'm, I never know how the melody come there. I hear him from the song name. Um, what is the song name again? Um, what is the song name again? From Grand Spin. Mm-hmm. Um, with with, with um, Luton and Stitch and the whole of them. From the song. You're talking to Stereo One. Stereo One. Mm-hmm. I hear the little you from time to time, I stir one. No. So, no, you know, when me see my, when me see my curious, I never know how to use that pan stir one. And then, book now, me hear voice and thing until a mama tell me, say, yo, what do you that when the pan stir one? And then, my boss, you know, nice if we you know, thing and then we we'll meet him now and then, Mr. King say, yo, we're well, going to well, produce, you know, and I say, yeah. And then, for right at the time, he never go through a lot. I never know that he had some problem or whatever, but we try to help him through problems and things. But to my love and advice and everything, we just said, right, you know, I'll record some song with him. I mean, Michael came to the studio mm-hmm. and put modern girls together and make him vocal it. It take him a while to advise the song, you know. Because mm-hmm. I've one song him do, it take him a while. But we have the big bad rhythm and we have to go out put out this tune and all with him. And then we we'll get mother and girl together and she took mother and girl on the night when we did it around three hours oh, in text for Vice Song. Hmm. But me Vice Song, me Vice Rhythm, and um, Major Words Vice Team Rhythm, which we are going up on my contract, some rates and make some money. Of course. Talking, talking, and then quote the melody, come in on the student, and I say, all right. We have vice at you to make him vice at you and him. Modern girl. There's a modern girl come from and then boom. Modern girl. There are three songs that I put out at the same time. Major words, Robert French and the Court of Melody. And the modern girl and the the the, the, the rough and tough just take off. Mm-hmm. And me just take off to behind it. And you know the two songs that I have one. And go on, but the modern girl and the rough and tough is the two song that stand out on the reading. And then they say go. Right there. Cause even you brought it up, Major Worries, make some money. Cause Major Worries is one of my favorite DJs from well, back I, then. I tell them most favorite youth that to me, you know, yeah. favorite youth. And the thing yeah, with him, to know. You understand, because the thing with him, he wasn't a big artist per se at that time there when you had voiced him. How do you even connect with a major worries to put that song out now? The major worries, you know, I just see him bridging metal Jamaica. I mean, um, we link with him through uh, Jamis because I was the one that I keep going to Jamis because I'm mean, here sing, I sing for Jamis too, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sing song for Jamis. 
And um, Major Worries was one of the artists really. I, in that most of the place, I just mean, grew. And the sound system, I grew and I come on. And I mean, say, I come on. And I have one and two little songs, like imagine, one kid, yeah, kid rocks and, and whatever. You know say, and I go out and I say, you know, so we need to fight you there. Mm-hmm. And we call him up the night and he said, well, I want to buy some tune and come and I'm coming at the studio and when the day I will start vibe from there. So, and me was the artist that I was grooming to really become the big star in Jamaica. And was sadly to know that, you know, in our south and we never get to really finish up an album or whatever, but still I have songs with major words that not released. Okay. Yeah. So how many did you actually, how many major worry songs did you release? Two. It was two. It was the one on the modern girl and the other one was on the, um. Teach you. Teach you yes. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that was really your artist that you're going to say, okay, you know what? Let's bring him to the forefront and really make him that big star that you know he is. Well, it was my artist and it was Jamie's artist. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was singing on Jamie's and all those stuff. Yeah, it was Jamie's artist, but him come along and do them singing for me and him kind of like our vibes too, you know? So, you know, we never reach for him because we have some good tunes that Jamie's mm-hmm. ever has, you know what I mean? Because like the um like the um the the the, 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 the teacher you read him and pan mother and girl read him we have them two song there and them song there and do, did well you know out there and build up him steam and build up him steam but if you never drop out them song there that be big big song mm-hmm. because I'm gonna do for perform them and I'm gonna do different do a lot behind them so you know that's only one of the things that we did really sad about when with the passing of major words because we know that it was going to be one of the biggest thing out of Jamaica. Because a lot of artists, if you look even to this day, has uh, some form of an influence from a major worries to this day. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That was the, that was a man major words, mm-hmm. and a lot of them was around major words from that man being to Shabarangs to all of them. Mm-hmm. Them know themselves, you know, it's like me, always was a boss. Mm-hmm. That's wild there. Even talking about teach you rhythm, did you actually produce the Barrington Levy on the rhythm too? No, I never produced the Barrington Levy on the mm-hmm. rhythm. I think um, that Barrington Levy was produced by, I think, um, Bobby. I think mm-hmm. it was Bobby Digital. Mm-hmm. That, um, that was not my race, no. Mm-hmm. You just had a, a cut of the rhythm and you were producing some songs on it. That's right. Got you there. Big stuff. You're doing a lot of big stuff. This is another monster song in your catalog, but this one is now a combination with you and Clement Irie, Bun and Cheese. But I'm going to give you full disclosure. I spoke to Clement Irie a couple months ago. He gave me his version of the song. I want to know your version of how this song came around. All right. Well, this song, oh boy, Clement Irie come to me with a song. And I said to him that, you know, I'm not singing over the song, you know. Because you know, I'm singing this, uh, um, this song, and it was a Dover song, Hurt Angel. And my thing was, I want to come original at, at all times. Mm-hmm. I never intend to sing no song over. But it means sis, boy, come on, never bad tune, man, we could do this thing. And, Clement I was my artist and produced song before um the bun and cheese. Mm-hmm. Which was um every passing you feel follow me. Mm-hmm. And from this and now he said to me, say, boy, Frank, we have another bad tune no more and put on the song. And I say, this is for the song. He must say, Yeah, shall the bun me had a cheese, but stop it. <laughs> but guess what no. Mm-hmm. When 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 him bring up that part, you know, no, Mister Tim say, you know, I'm singing something. I'm saying, man, a song, you know, or a and thing, you know. But when I want to sing a one about the song, you know, mm-hmm. and then no, me go right play land in upstate um, New York mm-hmm. before I even go into the studio with Clement I with this song, and I hear, um, you know, the man that make a boot. 
Mm-hmm. And you go in there and you sing the song. If you sing the song, then you get a prize. The same archangel song come up in front of me um, before he came in and me mentioned it to him. Okay. And um, I sing the song, I'm going to get a prize. So I know I didn't have the song, then I didn't be done. I already had the master the song in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So when he comes to me with the song, um, again, I may think about it. I say, sure. Come like this meant to be in a man. I said, this brother had to pest me about this thing, you know. <laughs> I'm not a chop. I can't remember how this. Anyway, I'm going to ask you now. I'm going to say, I think, I think, when you be mine. And can come in, she had a bone, me had a cheese, most go it. And I'm going to say, Patron and Clement. And I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you, tell you about Patron. I'm going to say, all right, Mr. Clement. Because I'm me producer song, you know. Mm-hmm. Me produce a song for live events and all of them to put out overseas here. Mm-hmm. Me produce a song, and then all of a sudden, me see chemists come up on the song. Chemists don't go mix the song. But them take some of my credit, right? That's all. But it's just that outside now. Mm-hmm. But anyway, put out the song, and me tell the man when to put out the song. Because he said to me, say, when mm. you think I should put on the song, I said, put it out on Easter. Mm. Mm. And when he put on the song on Easter in England, mm-hmm. now we get a call of the man at Crossout and a bad word. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and the man said, you the song, a big tune, big, big tune. And now the man, the man, the whole of the man, the song of boss of England, man, I meet them chess. I'm gonna start meet my chest yet because I'm me produce the song. Of course. And then all of a sudden, we get so much things that we get a platinum record in England, mm-hmm. we get a gold record in England, we get all of them accolades in England, and we go all of the big time things I'm in England. Because we're gonna reach England, all different type of people who um, see me and all of these things. The first show me do in our place in Shinola. I don't even know if that place still exists. People, our, our, our girls are going to my pocket and one, one, yo, that was one of the two that mash up England. Mm-hmm. Mash up England. I'm saying mash up England and um, entourage and reach at the airport and all of these things. So it was a good vibes. But then, Jesus, so that you never really come across, you know, what I came in Tyreek come with the, 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 the energy. And the vibes. Yes. You see, your version and his version is basically the exact same version because he told me that you didn't really want to do because you didn't want to sing over somebody's song. That's exactly yeah. what he told me. Yes, ma'am. I never want to sing over nobody's song. Mm-hmm. Honestly, because me, I say, you know, I hear them guys. What's the name again? Um, it was Bell Beef and Defoe. What's the name again? New Edition. Was, uh, New Edition. Mm-hmm. New Edition, them sing the song too. Mm. And me, I said, bro, I chill. Me, I love that, you know. I can't buy a rerun them song, you know. But, 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 but I did well to the song. Mm. And Clement, I read, I know, like, mass time thing, and I did well also. So the song become real on point. And the song, if big time. Mm-hmm. And we use that one song on tour, the whole place, you know. That's crazy. We take off the song named Life off of the number one spot in England. Then we head for the British. Um, you know that song, Life? Life is what we make. Mm-hmm. That's um, um, those two, Daddy Freddy and... Right, and Mighty. Mm-hmm. Something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And we take that song off the number one spot. We are on England. Mm-hmm. England are mash up with bun and cheese. <laughs> Me right, bun and cheese. <laughs> 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 but and cheese, who make but and cheese? All, all is up here. We got a song that every year in England it's still playing. To this, yeah, big, year. big song, big song. Big, big, yes, big, big song, big, big song. How come you guys never did a follow up or something else like that after the song? <laughs> Clement Tyre, no, we make another big tune, you know, with Clement Tyre. Sometimes we'll so wall over, wall over, and sometimes on us breaks. We do the other song, but you know what, Clement, I don't know, this is what I expect now, the song probably, I'll get a deal, you know, with, um, it was this company, Profile, mm-hmm. but I'll get a deal, me and Clementary, to do an album, 
because we had looked all the deal and everything. And we had my some tune and we made Jamaica's like coming to provide all the tune for Bobby Digital. And then this, that made me feel disheartened, you know, that's the only thing Clement if I do it. Mm-hmm. But otherwise on that, my brother is still love him, but me never want him, to, if he just stick to him, he just believe, you know. And I still say, yo, this is in England, we could just do this and we could just dominate England certain way. It did happen, but I just said, you know, everybody had a need going out at a time, and mm-hmm. things happen. It's just one of those things, but it's definitely one of those songs that's a monster song in your catalog. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to bring up a name that most people probably don't even remember or haven't heard from in a long, 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 long time. Commander Shad, ignorant. Okay. (laughs) How did you even come up? How did you guys come up with producing that song? And how did you even link with somebody like a Commander Shad? Because after that song, I didn't hear about him before, nor after that song. All right, the Commander Shad song, no, that is the history. That song was, it's like, I, I co produced that song, but that song was um, Kennedy. Kennedy, yep. He's the one who, I would say, I would give more credit to the song mm-hmm. because I wasn't in Jamaica at that time when that song made. Mm-hmm. It was Kennedy. You understand? But it was that he was working with me in collaboration. So this is how the production team works. You know, I just spread my wings with other people to do this stuff for me and things used to happen because I have to travel all over the place. Mm-hmm. So that song really is, I give this Kennedy. I'm credit for that song. Another one. Okay. Everybody, a lot of people talks about this, but again, I want to hear from your point of view. Bouger Banton's first single, The Ruler. How did that come around now? The ruler is to Clementire again. Me and Clementire are spark. I have a big song. I'm going to go Clementire house at White Hall Avenue. And when I go Clementire, I see the kid, Bougie Banton, mm-hmm. sit on the, uh, right at the house. Um, um, there was like a, a under staircase thing, and the door was under the staircase. Like, I'm seeing sit on there and say, What's up, kid? And he look up on me and to the uncle, you to the uncle screw face. I'm going to say, well, I want. He said, boy, they I'm going to say, you can't, you can, you can, like him and Clementary, I have a talk with a Clementary neighbor. Mm-hmm. So, and me as a kid say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Like me as him father beat him or something, something. I don't know what it was. That father must lock him out or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it was something to the start where, um, we said to Clement, say, the youth them say, boy, I'm a bad DJ, and them can DJ. And I'm like, he say, yeah. I say, yeah. So we say, you old man, you can DJ. He say, yes. Yeah. So Clement, I, you know, me tell us, bring him at the studio in the night. Mm-hmm. And then bring him come to the studio in the night. And as him come, we say, you can DJ every two. He said, go around there. You want me here, you to. And him go around the studio. And when I'm going to the studio now, me and start very short. Hmm. And then I say, yes, I can't lead you for two. I'm recording. I'm recording. I'm going record. to put out him first single with True VP. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting like a buzz and thing. And, you know, that was one of the first encounter with Bojo Bantan. Right there. Do you ever produce any more songs with him or was just his first one? Um, I, 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 no, that was, just, we have other, uh, um, takes, but we never really have a solid song. Mm-hmm. So that was the first song with Bojabantan. Got you there. Because even before we even leave, cause I know you migrated to the States and stuff like the same junior Reed half pint, Michael Palmer situation. Was it still going on? Was it only that one song you'd put out for them or there was other songs that you'd put out for them at that time also? For who? Michael Bam. Yeah, no, for because remember you'd put out the them the rough like me. That was that was aimed towards Junior oh. Reed, half pipe, oh. Michael Palmer. Yeah. Did, did you put out yeah. any other songs that was aimed towards them at that time? Yeah, I put out some other songs. They might push, 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 but then can't push I over. 
No way. And then I push, 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 push for the gaffers. I beat you that again. Yeah, but I have some songs that I chew at them. I have some darts that I chew at the balloon and I bust them to you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The view there, them give me inspiration for the whole for things. And me give them thanks. And I always love them. And I always care about them. And I always think about them because they move me to do more, you know? Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever have an all out clash on stage or one of the shows or anything like that before? No, we never. It was just some musical vibe here. You know, you have them different. Them did it used to segregate themselves away from me in a way where when them come and see each other, I'm a par, I'm me, they're on one side, I hold my own, you know. But it was just a, 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 a um, like I the artist thing mm-hmm. where every man and the name, where every man I hold them, them one lane and everything, and they hold our energy. But them, you there, we admire them because. Them change the business to a different level and then make artists have more to achieve in you know, the business because what they do, what Junior with Michael and 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 and, and um Aspine do, mm-hmm. they make the promoter and know say they deserve more money and deserve better. And them kind of step up the thing. And even me now start lick out to and it step up to another level to you. So most of the artists are mostly coming at the game now and start excel over we. Mm-hmm. Or them start eat food after we. And we start it and we start saying, yo, we deserve more. It's like we're going at the business and we start revoluting our way and tell the promoter, say, yo, we start doing a little bit more. And other artists come after that and the things start grow and grow and grow and grow till artists now get how much millions of dollars services mm-hmm. each and all and things like But it was a good energy. And Michael Palmer Junior never forget them. Love mm-hmm. them, the net, murder them. Big, big, big. So then all of this stuff, all this great stuff is going on for you in Jamaica. You're doing a lot of stage shows, you're flying out and all. So why did you decide to migrate at this time here now? Family. Mm-hmm. My family. <laughs> well, my family was like, well, the first son with this lady, and then Marlene, if I married her, and thing, and boy, she never was like, well, that tall, you know, my last one. So I must just under arms at all times, sit down with her, what's so papa. <laughs> 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 so, well, I'm there fine, and I'm there to her, say, you know, I can't so still, you know, we have to go out, you know, we just need to go lonely and all of these things, but we still have the shows in other places, you know, and in the New York City, we get artists of the year, and then the time that one, what about okay. so, so, but we still have the things that we not fly in Canada, but every time we fly on the place, we leave our home, you know, I'm a rich other place in a free bed. Mr. Sipman say, we get a way to take. You know, that the 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 Mr. Sabe um with a fast jet turn here. I mean like jumbo jet. jet. We say I don't we take a jumbo and I can take come here. Sometimes I'll upstairs I'll have my room and chill off and take off and thing and mirror. The 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 man was upstairs, you know, the hotel phone. I'm Mr. French. You have your wife in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> because of trust, you know. She never trusts me because I'm always a lovable you would I don't know the girls and all it love me but I don't know. <laughs> because I love really, you know. Mm-hmm. Put out my energy with them and think, I don't know, I love the female them and think, because women are always, always crown them queen, so mm-hmm. that's it. But that was one of the moments I'm come American and sit down, see a bit with the lady and she have the kid and all of these things, and I try to be a father and all of that. And up to this day, you know, mm-hmm. we would grow to become mm-hmm. man now and thing and look up at me and say, boy, dad. So we still have that rooted thing where we never leave 
machine or the lady, Miss Tando, that was as a father, for you. come here, grow up and come say dad, you know, and still mm -hmm. respect me. So that was another moment why I come to America. Mm -hmm. But I never really want to come to America. I'm like, here probably people the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one time, them five for me, I'm going to tear that up and I'm going to say, oh, well, I'm going to want to come and go, you know. Mm -hmm. But she want me to come live. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to just come to you, know, I say, Chano, I really don't want to come live. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a different pace at that time, especially there's no, you, there are studios around because where were you based? In New York? No, I was based, yeah, in New York, Mount Vernon. But you know, okay. it looked good for me, you know, in the world. Because after all of that, you know, we come and meditate, you know, I started getting involved with the, the hip hop culture, you know, me put all the first every day song, reggae, I mean, every day, and, and me introduce every day with Super Cat, mm -hmm. me introduce him with Bojo and them thing. And we have one of the big tunes I made every day. Me always up and the behind him that every day was my bun and cheese. Every day they love the song the bad. Mm -hmm. And with the underground New York and do a show with Clementine and every day come there and meet me. And I said, you see, you come from Mount Vernon. I'm like, yeah, man, I come from Mount Vernon. And here at the up there, something our wife did live. Mm -hmm. My ex-wife, I should say, did live. And then after all of that, no, you say. Come in, man, make me do some tune. And then start link up and start burn the place with him and start going on the road with him and all of these things. Every day was one of my great, great, great bridging to and my love the youth to death. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm dead when I'm at the meta, rest in peace in a car. I just saw the thing set in a car. The boy said, You there? I tell you. I tell you. In my heart, boy, I tell you. I love your heart, you know? For real, because I know you did a, a remix or a refix of Modern Girl. This was with Courtney Melody, Heavy D, and Brigadier Jerry. And Brigadier Jerry, yeah. I, I do that production also. Yeah, and um, I've got release on the VP, Sony, Japan, and all over the place. But it was a good project, though. You know, that's why keep is keep Heavy D in the Jamaica roots. Mm -hmm. I go there and I'm love. The energy and him just want to just do some reggae music and and the first one who bring him out and the reggae and it's just me I'm the first one who bring out a lot of them Grand Puba. Because I do a song with yeah I bring a Grand Puba. I, I have a song with Grand Puba named Cry No More. It's on the sample V P mm -hmm. sampler. I think it's thirteen or something like that. And it's on single too. Mm -hmm. And it did well all over the place. I don't wanna cry, cry no more. Big tune. And I did one with with Jeff Red. Mm -hmm. And um with I'm the over you with Barry Samali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that same rhythm. And you know, we get a lot of experience on the hip hop market, you know. Because I used to encounter with Puff Daddy a lot. He needs to come in on the store a lot. Because at this time you had I the record was, store. Right, and the record mm -hmm. store in Mount Vernon. So mm -hmm. we have every artist come there. We think of all of them, the big daddy key, and all of them walk through the store. And we have like um, uh, Christopher Williams. Mm -hmm. We have, um, what a guy name again? Um, um, uh, that that RB thing with the FD. What's his name again, man? I can't remember the name, but anyway, we have you know, the white jeans. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of hip hop stars and, and alongside the Mir J and all of them come to the store. Jeff and everybody. That's crazy. Puffy, Mary, Heavy D, everybody, Grand Cuba, everybody. all these people. All these people come to the store. All these people. And I want to know, I forget some of the stars, but them mm -hmm. still was there with us, you know. Even Kiss. Yes. Okay. I in my store in practice every day. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the record um, store? Um, 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 it was French, French records. French records. Yeah. And you were selling reggae and hip hop at that time? Reggae, hip hop, everything. 
I know so much about hip hop and R and B and everything. Yeah, because it's sort of just our store that sell all of that. And you say you were the one that linked um Heavy D to Supercat. How did that happen? Yes. Well, every day come to my store and um one night was having a act tree in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. And I end up at the act tree and every day said to myself. Mr. King says, Super Cat, and say, Let me link up Super Cat, you want me to Super Cat. So I'm going over there to Super, Mr. Super, every day you are linked with you, know. Super say, Oh, no, you don't know Super, they don't have a little shit sitting with it. Oh, I'm eating the body, right? And I'm going say, No, Super, you have to meet this Virginia. This Virginia large every day. And that's how them link up. And say, All right, bring him in, I'm going to bring him in. And it's one of them start link from there. So, and the thing, Chip off, big bad area. Yes. And them start rock the place and every day push out him in best with Super Cat to and mm-hmm. get the thing going. And that was it. That's crazy because I know and you even get and even get Super Cat with Puffy for the um Who's the Man soundtrack. With B not all of BIG mm-hmm. and and all of them. That's everything who link all of that together so that Supercat could come in and do all of that. That's crazy. And all of this is basically because of somebody linking up at a record store. You introduce to somebody and it just goes on and on and on. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what. Till, 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 till it reach Chris Cross. And she saw Supercat most big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Supercat. Yeah, but it's just my link. My link make everything no Supercat. But a lot of a lot of times we are super and them not talk it like it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we talk like it is, I mean I'm over and I mean meet every day, I mean know everything. But every day. I mean I there every day I did mama and fly fly every day brother was my manager. Okay. So all of that we used to fly go all over the country, fly go Belize and all of them things with me and fly my ads. Cause they are miles. We understand? So I'm the one who make all the link. That's crazy. You're the one with the record store, and then you just put everything That's together. Right. Mm-hmm. Puffy is a man that come piece up bad boy with the little him so I have a son. We put the at the big hat on him and the big shoes and put him up on the flyer. That bad boy, all of that is piece up in my record store in Mount Vernon. Has all of them kids. Mm-hmm. Puffy, the whole of them, them come right under my wings in my store. That's wild there, because I know you have an album. This was, I think you produced it, but it was put out by Russ, the one with you, Heavy D, and Friends. Right. That's me put on that album, and I give it to Russ to distribute. So, um, so and, and at that time, you know, um, Mr. Arafab, you know, was supposed to do a big video with me and Heavy D and he would get an um, art surgery at the time and never happened. Mm-hmm. But the song was under us and the album was already doing well at that time and still around and doing what it's doing, you know, because I know one who really go hard out and put out that um, album. That's crazy. You and Heavy D and friends on an album. That's that's big right there still. And yeah. again, it's just because this is why I like to have these conversations because we hear the music Big Heavy with Brad with Super Cat, Frankie Paul, Heavy D. But again, we don't know how these things actually really, really, really came together. What happened? How did we get here? But we're jumping mm-hmm. up and dancing to these songs every night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Robert Trench made it possible because if it was a meter in Super Cat, it could happen. In I might have been in a different life, but I was the one who was right there mm-hmm. at the time to say, well, super, meet every day, every day, meet super. Come I mean, love super cat, you know, me mm-hmm. definitely as a super cat fan. Yeah. I love super. Super, I'm a, I'm a D, I'm a D, <laughs> like that. You see me? Mm-hmm. So, um, we just want to make the link and I proudly make the link and it happened. Mm-hmm. You didn't produce anything with Supercat, though. No, mm-hmm. never produced anything with Supercat. It was just one of those things that didn't just didn't happen. Yet. It didn't happen, you know, yet. Yet, yeah, it, never, it, it never happened because um, what did happen is that Supercat is what I like about Supercat in all is um, 
put out him as to get free things and it mm. level to, you know, in, mm. in, in, in doing the thing and I don't know if he that produce himself to an other tip, but I you know he did always have him like a thing well put together and everything and me did always respect that, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. This is another big series that you were involved with, the um, Reggae Platinum series. I think it was volume one to four. Right. For artists I did only. all of them. Yeah, I did all of them. Um, I put all, all of them platinums and all of them go to the billboard. Yeah. How did you link up with artists only to actually start to work on something like that? Oh, um, I link up with artists only to my manager. I used to have a manager named Mike Keisha. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to be at November Records too. There was a, another company named November Records. And when I leave November, I go through to artists only. And mm-hmm. this is all these guys know was around. It was good. Jer- um, Jerry McCarthy, he was at um, Quest. Mm. Capital Records, and um, these guys come over and this farm, this label, artists um, only, and they was looking for producers who can do the thing. And my manager link with them, and then I get to know them, and then from there it happened. Start putting off songs. Mm-hmm. Cause I know Morgan Heritage. There's, there's how many artists do you work with on those series here? Man, I work with a lot of artists and I work with some producers too because mm-hmm. um, it was uh, so quick that we actually put out one platinum. You have to prepare the next one and I have my album to do also and I have other uh, artists. So some of the tracks I will produce and some of them I take them from different producers too mm-hmm. and put a comparison together. Because that was a time when reggae gold was around. So I guess there was reggae gold and reggae platinum. I'm the one who come with the idea. <laughs> put it platinum. Because <laughs> yeah, um, I sit there with Dale Ashley and Jeremy McCarthy one day, and I was like, oh, we, we, we need to do a series. And I said, yeah, well, we're going to do a series, man. But we can do the platinum, though. Hmm. Because you don't have the goal already, you know, the platinum is the ice thing. So <laughs> Christian is my good friend also. I'm mm-hmm. VP and we go to school together. But I wasn't working with them as much as oh I should. We were doing a lot, but at that time I didn't want a little change just to see what's happening on this side at all. Mm-hmm. And with artists only was a change. Mm-hmm. So I started to um do some production. So that was the production I called with. And then I started linking up producers from Jamaica to come up and give artists all this stuff. And this is how the artists on the catalog grew. Mm-hmm. We get big because we have Jamies, we have Bobby, we have other people giving them stuff. And I was the one that did um, behind the scene doing all of that. Um, 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 what you call it, um, grouping every um, producer, mm-hmm. the, um, that um, company rotating and growing and growing and growing. So I just want to watch that vibe again. For sure, definitely. Even right now, did you have your distribution company at that time, your French distribution also? <laughs> yes, I did. I was that in Jamaica, yeah. The French distribution now is a part of it. I say, this is really Robert French. I always think about going higher and higher, and I always think about doing something productive. Mm-hmm. So, the distribution company, what I said in Jamaica, it was just the right time to make sure whatever I produce in Jamaica, I could distribute to other. Companies. So I still have the VP, I still have the artist only, I still have uh, the Jet Star, I have all the companies. I just make the records and ship them to them and say, Guess what? Means a distribution just like us. Now let's try to do something that make them see me and know so. You know, um, the idea is 
Ah, oh, okay. Me have all this right there and just no sir, boy, yo, this is rubber friend. This is rubber friend. Don't trust me. I'll do things. And just to make you understand, say, yes, I can do it. Mm. Yeah, so take a, uh, push my foot into the distribution company. Then I'm the distribution company because the catalog is big enough. Yeah. Big and wide. Yeah, because talking about the catalog, I know that you did some early work with um, Cut You Ranks and Johnny P and those type of guys there too. Yes, I did. And I did uh, uh, Wally Powerworks, man. Wally Powerworks. Mm-hmm. Wally Powerworks. Jack Mason. Name them. Jack here. Jack Luciano. Here, yeah. Luciano. Mm-hmm. Um, why? I mean, you know, I saw some Ben, um, ben Brown. Barry mm-hmm. uh, Salmon. Okay. Name. What was it? What was that feeling like now where Barris had first gave you the song, you want to go record it for Joe Gibbs, and you came back, recorded some stuff for him. But now was your turn to say, okay, Barris, come record for me, which was over you. What was that feeling like to now have Barris Hammer recording for you now? I mean, I know, I know. I'm going to tell you something. It's a Barris Hammer. Mm-hmm. For me, you look at and have um, that pearl of hand under my hand. Mm-hmm. It was one of the greatest feelings because gets what? Of people don't know where me and Barry Salmon I come from. Mm-hmm. Me and Barry Salmon I come from. We are walk. <laughs> yeah. We are walk from cross from off the tree mm-hmm. to swallow field and walk come back. Yeah. And who oh, know Jamaica well? I know Kingston, Jamaica. I've known that walking from off the tree to swallow field and walk from swallow field back to off the tree. That's a long walk. <laughs> yeah. You get me? And we used to see people, you know, the bus and they might say, see us sometime and say, well, if you tell a big friend and, and you, you know, my friend, you know, my bike, yeah, yeah. And, you know, people say, you hear me? And we never watch that. We just exercise and that like a bear, some man could always do what he can do. Mm-hmm. And me could always do what he can do. We now go pace people, and I take my time. Mm-hmm. And within that time, Barris was a, my, my party with me and many man do our work a thing, we do our we go all over the place. And well, I'm missing yes on the street, man, and boy, you know, people laugh and pop up, but uh, that other smell is like a secret. But I'm a brother. I'm a brother, I'm a brother like that. I'm beef brother. Is there any one advice Barris Hammond's ever given you about your career or music or anything that you, to this day, you still follow that advice? Yeah, I just tell me, hold up my head and, mm. and, and stick to what we can do best. And so, you know, listen, make sure anything I put out for the people and you put out good so mm. not do the people and not the top. Oh, you say, you know, you're getting a tumor, they're not really a piece of love with you. Give them things with them I love with you because you are it's a record. Anything you put in the library, it's on it's gonna be there and they're gonna dry it over and over for the next mm-hmm. four to fifty years or more. So give the people them good music. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Even because you've been doing stuff late 70s, 80s, and 90s and stuff, how do you even connect now? This is way later down. How did you even connect with somebody like, hmm, we're going to go random here, like Sizzla? Because he's from a totally different generation from you doing different stuff. How do you connect with him? Well, Sizzla, um, I'm from Nanagil Gardens. Mm-hmm. And Sizzla and my brother used to go to school mm-hmm. and some other kids from Nanville Gardens. Caveman was my other song from Nanville Gardens. Mm-hmm. And I used to sing on Caveman. I used to give them the dub plate and all of that. And, you know, boss me like a song in my era. Me and I grow. So mm-hmm. this is what happened now. Sidla and all of these guys go to school together. So Sidla, when he start um, talk on the sound system now, he come to Nanville. Mm-hmm. And the man and friends them hang out in Ananville and me go down there, you know, and hear this you type and steal man and him have so much songs. Me take on to look at him and say, what are you bad? I mean, you must need you some song. I'm saying, what are you, man? So I always 
insist that boy, you know, I'm going to work hard with him. 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 Murphy, that time she's like Murphy and the whole place are run red. Everybody are rass and all of them to them. Rass way mm-hmm. before them doing you know. it. We're going to get into that after this is, uh, yeah. So when we, when we, when we record things, we know one thing, we say, yo, that is one of the great achievements we're making at the production. Talk, uh, you know, having Sizzler in you know, the catalog, it was always a blessing. So Mr. Sizzler, one of my artists, though. Love Sizzler. Love him. And was Sizzler the link to Luciana and Jacquier, where that came differently? Mm-hmm. Sizzler was just a link to Keith Man. Mm-hmm. And from that point of uh, I step over to um, Jacquier, because only we link with Jacquier, we link with Jacquier to Mary Salmon still. Mm-hmm. No, I link him before Mary Salmon. Okay. And then I go to Mary Salmon and see Mary Salmon and record him tough. You understand? But I link him from um, Jamison mm-hmm. and up at um, Judgment Yard with, with Keep It Up. Mm-hmm. I stop at Judgment Yard, you know. It's Judgment Yard before I keep it on this. Uh, no, he's um, David O's. David O's. It's his last Judgment Yard. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I want um, no, to mix them up. David O's for me, um, um Jack Cure mm-hmm. and um, Jam Mason and many of them link from the time with the, um, Joseph I and all of the mutes and we have to the production. And then now, we never record Jack Cure at that time. Mm-hmm. Then we go marry someone. And I go over by Mary from the answer Jack Cure. And I say, hey, we are over here. You want to ask him to come and do something to me, Dada. Mm-hmm. And Dada didn't call Mary. So I say, hey, I was a cool. So me and my man do something to Mary's now. We tell him, say, you're going to do something to me. And he just come across and just come do some things to me. And girlfriend and them to me. And I say, yo, yo, you're tough. Mm-hmm. So I saw me and Lucian and now. Me and Lucian are linked on a different level again. Because I know Lucian for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to release, um, he's supposed to revive Lucian for modern ideas. From those times? Yeah, I'm never get to f- f- record the youth, and then me and you that pop the place. Mm-hmm. And then we say, Well, I forget some lotion. And lotion is a blessed youth again, to bless, bless. And I love him, I salute him. You know, lotion will come across and do some tune for me, and you know, and the tune them nice. Moving out of Babylon and all them big tune. And so, many of a good link. And Lucian and I will always stand out as one of Jamaican great. For sure. And even, aren't you related to um, Pat Kelly? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm a cousin. Yeah. I'm a cousin. My me cousin that. And um, my auntie, son. And um, because he mother in French. Mm. Yeah. And um, by the time I asked him, oh, you know, name French, you name Kelly. But many of us don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if, in, through the father link, why I named Kelly. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what Kim said, yo. And he also had a long one, particularly at most the place. Many of us really have seen car. He might travel all over the place, England, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And now, um, many of us get to see him like that. But when we get to see Pat Kelly, it's like um, one day I met traveling at the airport. I mean, I'm going to say, No, you name Pat Kelly. I'm saying, Yeah. He's like, You name a very French. I'm going to say, Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, my family. I'm going to say, Yeah, you have a family with two. I don't know this, so I'm going to say, Link. But we never get to do much. Mm-hmm. And that kind of hurt me a bit, you know, because we never get to share the experiences, you know. Mm-hmm. Share minds with him and him share is with me, you know, because I didn't want to suck with him. Mm-hmm. And whenever I never get to do so, but my cousin and me, me yeah. style. Anybody else in your family is a notable singer, artist, producer, musician, or anything? No, I'm thinking, well, I mean, I like to, you know, I'm 27, now we're on the 
I'm mm. getting spread out so much, so I don't even know where I'm going right now. Mm-hmm. But me have some, me have, I, I, I hear about some friendships, you know? mm-hmm. and um, I, it's a why that I don't even know some of them, and I hear some of them are just music otherwise and all of that stuff. So, mm-hmm. I just go out. Wait until my book them up and then them can say, well, boy, I mean, do this hard to reveal themselves to me that they are said to myself, that, yeah. But when I don't really know of none, so to speak, when I really sit down and raise the weight mm-hmm. at this point in time, no. I'm not particularly alone so far. But mm-hmm. I hear French doing classical music in England. Okay. You can look him up. He has some meetings going on in England. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how the family structure with him, if it's a cousin or if it's a brother or an old miss because mm-hmm. my father passed. So it's like the link of the family trend is like where it go in you know, a way where we basically ask questions. But now I'll get to the point. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a real link to one of my family, them son or Nephew, if I'm a nephew, I have old, 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 old. Yeah. I don't know really. Some form of link, yeah. But a French and some classical music and a big in England, mm-hmm. okay. Because you've had this wonderful career from late 70s, right? now. you did crazy producing, you had your record store and all that, but for a while you were off the scene, as in you weren't really recording too much yourself. But now, fast forward to 2022. You came up with a new song, all right? Every day of my life. And let me tell you what I think when I when I hear this song here. It's like a classical lover's rock song with that big sound, that big feel where it makes you feel like this is lover's rock right here. <laughs> Again, I think you better sound on credit because this is a, a link with me and him. Mm-hmm. And all of this is like... Um, I said to myself, you know what, well, if you give people something big time, you know, mm-hmm. because they can't come back out without a man. Mm-hmm. So this was a song. I seen and know what I find with Mary Sam. This song come up again and me just said, well, you know what, this other song. Mm-hmm. Um, I just come put some other little farm at three times. Boom. You're right there. And how is the song doing right now? It's doing well, you know. It's doing well. It's doing well all over. And I'm getting some good reception from the song. The song is in the Florida chart. It's in the New York charts. And it's going all over the place. England is doing well. And France, I get to understand that it's doing well over there. Jamaica, it's a boss Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Uh, what people loving the song? Um, as we speak, tomorrow I'm doing an interview on the bridge reader in Jamaica. I okay. think we're going to do um, IRFM and all of the stations. So it's doing well. The groundwork. Because when you listen to it and you said, okay, you've been linking with Bears for like 40 years now, now it all makes sense. Because this, if you took off your voice and put on Bears Hammond's voice, it would match perfectly the same way because it has that type of lover's rock energy to it. Produced proper, sounds nice and big with the vocals, the production, everything is good. Right, because that's the way I'm learning to you know, learn it. You know, we're, I'm, even when I go close to Barry's, you know, I hear it's just like for him to do a production and you sit by him and see what he's doing and all of that, you know, it was always a great experience to know that Mary Salmon always loved the big sound, and always loved things to come together as refined as possible to get that perfect sound and melody to go there. So listening Barry's, it made me advance mm-hmm. because it the most always an elder for me. And me and one of the youth have grew up on them wings. So if men are learned from him, that means that he's a dunce. Mm. Made the tick. Mm-hmm. So we have to learn all of the things that we're doing, all of the little things that we're put together and make the sound work. So, mm-hmm. so I think them bear some teeth them for us still, but I have a fit. <laughs> <laughs> if we're good friends, we must go, okay, I'll give you a thing, you take back a thing, and everybody's all right. You know what I mean? 
That's right. But they, I mean, they could have a few things, right, man. I know that. Mm-hmm. You know, my mother, I'm, 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 I'm a dad. So we can't take, we can't say nothing else. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody knows. And a lot of people say me sometimes, like, oh, you know, they're going to rule the bear someone, and, you know, do this, you know, do that. No. And all the time, I'm a bear swing. Well, the same thing, man. I'm out there, I'm coming to some of the things I'm in my dog, man, because you are. I mean, one time I'll come in, I'll come do my thing again. Mm. So, mm, this is it. Yeah. And now I come with this new song, and this new song is a song where the people, everyone loves the song. Everyone, mm. yeah. Not one person tell me the song. But I, I'm not thinking twice, no. Everybody, I've been here to I love the song, you know. Let's say, good. So, I also want to do a song where the people in love. Mm-hmm. Not on four, about. Then you're good. Every day of my life. Is it available? Where's it available right now? Well, it's distributed through VP and it's available on all digital, all digital platform. Mm-hmm. Everywhere you can go, you can get it on the things or you can get it on um all of the platforms. Yeah, Spotify, I Apple too. Music, Spotify, all of them. Apple Music, every one of them. Yeah. You know what's so what's so crazy? You coming from record days to CD days and streaming days, and you're still going strong as a producer slash a singer. And it's just you seem to just love what you do. Yeah, because I'm I'm cemented in this business, you know, mm-hmm. and this business just start me well. It made me stand out as a man, and it made me understand that you don't take things for granted. You know, and you have to be more poised to really excel in this business. So it's just one of the things that we we just stay and say to myself, you know, we give thanks because all this morning that I get from this business, it only made me a better man. Mm -hmm. For sure. You understand that. I have two last questions before I get you out of here. You're, you've been on both sides, artists, you've been on sides as a producer. When you speak to a lot of artists, they say, oh, the producer didn't deal with them good or whatever the case is that they got robbed or whatever the case. What's the real relationship like between a producer, a musician, and an artist? All right. And so who feels it knows it. I'm a producer slash I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you something. Sometimes it's not even the, the, the producer part in it. All it depends on how you do the business. Mm. And if you're not doing the business properly, you're going to hurt the artist also because so many times, even me made that mistake. You give up distributor your song and you don't get the full compensation from the song. So what's going to happen to the artist? Mm-hmm. And what's going to happen to the producer? So sometimes the producer feel the blunt of the, of the stick with the artist. Mm-hmm. So that's how it always goes. And it's, it's not every time it goes that way either. You have some producers just take away from the artist and never give back. You know what I mean? But that's not me. I always try to make sure when I produce a song, whatever the artist is supposed to get, I send them to the distributor. Because sometimes the distributor is like, you know, when they give you um, a statement, you start crying. Hmm. Sometimes it's not the, the, the art and the producer's fault mm-hmm. because I, this is why I have to go to distribution mm-hmm. because I want to know what's going on in the business mm-hmm. and where was the hanky panky playing <laughs> because you know, say a lot of things going on in the business now. I see the man now with, behind the counter with the one well, of the money and the bag and the, uh, have the artist career. And the producer career too, you know, because I mean, by as a producer as a career. Mm-hmm. So we go behind the scene and watch what the distributor do sometimes. It, it wasn't something pleasing and it was something that burdened the producer mm-hmm. and burdened the artist. Mm-hmm. So we now blame just to have the distributor alone, we now blame just the producer alone, but it the table turned. It can t- turn on both sides. It can mm-hmm. turn on the, the producer side too. Because mm-hmm. sometimes some producer do some wicked things to artists too. It's not saying that it, every producer still the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, but some of the producers them don't know the business as good as oh, some pr- producers know it. Mm-hmm. Because when I was coming up in the business, I have to learn the business because I'm coming from an artist stage. 
just want to know what is happening on the producer side mm-hmm. and what's happening on the distributor side. So I just have to come across and learn all of the, 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 the avenues. And then from there, I understand where and how the artists get hurt and where and how the producers get hurt. So that is just a situation I have to travel to know what is happening. Mm-hmm. So it's basically, so then you got to see what's really happening from an artist point of view and then also from a producer point of view. Right. Another, another distributor point of view, because I do distribution too. So mm-hmm. it's all, it, it, it's all um, situations mm-hmm. where some things might go well here and some things might not go well here. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because when you take an artist song and you bring it overseas, and you give it to a distributor. Mm-hmm. And when you give it to a distributor, and a distributor put it out, and might give you a thousand dollars, right? Back in the day, you go back home, and you see the artist, and you give him, say, four or three or tight. Mm-hmm. And I said, boy, I'm to get more than that, you know? Yeah, if you get more than that, but that me get from the distributor. You understand? And when you bring back, you have to take back the expenses and all of that out of what you do. But, you know, sometimes the business is kind of funny, you know, that's right. <laughs> sometimes it take my time to put out my interest in me because if you put out your interest in other people, sometimes they might think differently. You know, and they might say, well, why? As they put out a first song, you're supposed to make millions. I don't know if mm. That's not how it goes. Because you have to, you have to grow in the business and grow and achieve in a later days. Even now, mm-hmm. the music thing, you know, it's digital and you know everything you now, call and um, views and all of these things, right? Mm-hmm. It's more you have to go, you have to perform, you have to get yourself on the bus and go perform to make that great achievement and that great amount of, of, of income that you want. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just sit down and just depend on streaming alone. Yeah. Streaming makes you popular, but to real make the money, you have to be on the ground and go get the money. That's right. You get That's it. Right. Last one I have here from you. You've been, I want, this is, this question is as a singer. Cause we had your producer hat. We spoke about your producer hat, but we're going to go back to your singing. When would you say has been the highest point in your career? And when would you say has been the lowest point in your career thus far? The highest part in my career. <sighs> Let me make all of them. It sounds like bunny cheese and rough and tough. And now I've become make this big tune again every day of my life. Mm-hmm. The highest part of it is when the migrated sound stands out for me, you know? Mm-hmm. And the lowest part is when, you know, sometimes you get some real burn in the game, because the game comes with ups and coming down, and then you come with some burn when they get a burn in the mm. I have to worry. Mm. We don't put our shoes on, come again. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. you have times in a way you have your great expectation, you know, but it don't really on point at the time. So you have to just know so why well, you are. Let us do it again. Mm-hmm. Because I signed the companies already. This is the lowest point I'm talking about, not the lowest point. Mm-hmm. Signed to some record company. And when you sign to a record company, you give them a certain amount of song. And then you come back to America and you get them chapter 11. You'll be like, hmm, see it. And you know, they have a large sum of money for you to, you know. I ain't never given none to you. It never come to you because in chapter 11, you ain't got nothing to do again. Bankruptcy, yep. You see me? So, ah, that plays out in the business too. Mm hmm. You know, and a lot of artists get hurt. Chap- going into business going into chapter eleven, yeah. and we have to just feel and come again. Like that, Mister French. I've been searching for you, looking for you for a while. But I got an email about two weeks ago from Reggae Global. Big them up, Joanna and the crew over there. And they sent out the song. Say, okay, every every day of my life. So I sent back an email. I said, Yo, 
is he doing interviews? And he <laughs> hit me back and said, yes. I said, wow. You know, long I've been looking to try to find this man. You know what yeah. I mean? And we found you and we had a great epic conversation to really see things through your eyes and to see how you've done it to still actually be here and produce in 2020 from you being in the business from basically the 70s. You understand? That's right. Yeah, man. No, thank you so much for sitting down with me today and doing this with us today. Yeah, respect myself. And enough respect to you always. And, you know, all the, all the blessings and just keep safe and sound as I do, you know. Mm-hmm. And just make we meet again because life is all about seeing each other at the end of the road again, though. No? You understand. Is there any, leave some contact information if they want to book you, if they want dub plates for shows, production, whatever the case, leave some contact information, any big ups, anything. The floor is yours right now before I get you out of here. Yeah, I want to make up all the people out there, you know, that um, watch us and, and listen to this interview because you have no, see, without you, the people, I couldn't be where I'm at and I give thanks to every single little thing and all the love and the joy and the respect I get from the item, enough love and enough blessing. I wish they had them safe journey and prosperity. And Robert French is coming from One Love. You understand? Leave some contact information if they want to check you out online. Yes, or... If you want to check me out online, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Robert French, you know, the name never changed. And um, the contact number, uh, contact number, um, which is, what, what the contact number? Um, Reggae Global. Mm hmm. You thank you to the Reggae Global. They have all the contact. And um, that's how they can reach me. You know, let's go to the the, 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 the social media, man. But they find all the things on Twitter everywhere. My mm-hmm. bird friends. Mr. French with the two Fs. Thank you so very much. And continue to do the work behind the scenes. And we're glad that you're back in front of the scenes with every day of my life. Hopefully this leads to an EP or album or more bodies of work. You understand? Yes, because it's, uh, we're coming with EP, man. We're coming with more body of tough work. Robert French here to stay. So I'm going to stick around and give the people the more than one because I love the people. And I know the people that love me. So one love us always. And so uh, big up on yourself, man. Big up on yourself. So let me give you an outro and get you out of here, Mr. French, because this conversation, epic, and another one for the books. And we gave you your flowers while you could still smell them. You understand? Respect, Muscle. All right, Bob. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. (laughs) This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.